All right, welcome to Avanti Health Solutions in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, this center of excellence houses uh, diagnostic imaging, ultrasound, and oncology. I'm Jeff Volpe. I'm Dar Thomason, Director of Enterprise and Strategic Solutions. Let's take a walk. All right, so hey, we're here in the bullpen and this is where everything happens. We have our accounting team and IT teams here, as well as our customer service team. And everything from a service and parts perspective happens and starts here with the customer service team. When customer has a problem, uh, they'll call in and we'll triage the situation, what's, what's needed, whether it be service on site or parts delivered. And uh, this group will help get that to tech support so we can figure it out and then fix everybody's problem. So this is shipping and receiving department here, um, kind of the beginning of the warehouse. Everything that comes and goes from here starts and ends here as well. So uh, when we bring equipment in, uh, we recently just uh, over the last year have adopted a new ERP system that tracks all of the equipment and inventory coming in and out and running it through our process. So everything comes in as a serialized, as a serialized item and uh, we track it that way throughout the system. So systems may come in and be harvested or torn down and then turns into a lot of serial numbers. Uh, and then also uh, that system may stay as that serial number, run through what needs to be done here, and then before it ships out, uh, we'll be tracked through here again so we can keep track of it in the field as well as uh, while it's in the boat. Wow. This is a big warehouse, guys. back it goes <laughs> all right so uh, I'm sure they've told you that this warehouse is approximately 600,000 square feet and um, you said 600,000 square feet 160,000 I'm sorry 160,000 square feet <laughs> I was like, we got bigger. That's why I'm so tired. I, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a mile walk. So a hundred, a hundred and some thousand square feet. And uh, how many parts do you guys keep on sand here? Well, we, we need to go speak with Josh. Okay. We're gonna. He's our inventory manager, and he has all the facts and figures about what parts we have in stock, how many go through this building, how many come back out. Um, basically, what I do is make sure that everything is organized in the building. Um, I oversee all the people that do the installations and the installations of, of our systems, the systems we bring in to harvest down to get the spare parts that we sell to our customers, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, and in a little bit, we're going to go out and take a look at some of the uh, mobile units that we're now doing. Um, and I got uh, Terry Tubigzak is our our parts testing manager, he's going to come and talk to you about the oncology side of the business as well as the QA bays that we have. Uh, I don't know if they've, they've spoken to you about this or yet or not, but one of the things that makes us more unique than most other companies is that any part that one of our customers purchases is thoroughly tested when we get it, it's tested when they order it, and inspected before it goes out. So. I know a lot of other companies will send you two or three parts and hope hopes that one of them is good. But we know that our parts are good when they go out the door, and that that is a big part of what the QA bays are for. Uh, and, and I don't want to get ahead of myself with the QA bays because you, you really have to see them as we talk about them. The warehouse goes way over there. 
and all these are parts. Massive. So this is Josh Little. He's over the inventory of this warehouse and he has all the facts and figures that you're looking for. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So are we gonna walk into the cage? Sure. Okay. We yeah. can if you want, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, in this facility, we house six modalities, uh, ultrasound, uh, cath, CT, MR, and nuke med, and linear, uh, radiation oncology. We house about $28 million worth of inventory in this facility, um, which equates to about 140,000 parts that we, uh, that we stock that you are available. You have 140,000 parts? Yep, yep. Holy cow. Over the, over the six modalities, you know. So uh, all of our parts are, all. this is our finished goods cage. Everything in here is ready for sale. Um, all of our probes get boxed and checked by the, uh, they're tested, and then they're also uh, checked by the inventory team and sealed. So these are all ready to go out the door, like at a moment's notice. Um, they travel in these boxes and they're specially foamed to protect the, the probes. Um, all of everything that needs an ESD protection is put in ESD bags. All of these computers are preloaded with software. If there's another software that you need on it, um, it can be preloaded before it goes out the door. Um, so yeah, we've got 140,000 parts from probes all the way down to non-ferrous screws for MRI. You can see everything is ESD protected. Wow. Um, we make sure that our finished goods are truly finished goods. And even we go a step further, when these come out of the cage, they are tested on outbound also. And we have a, a full inventory process for, for outbound testing by modality sign off procedures um, so you're guaranteed to get a good part when it leaves the building and since all these parts are tested mm -hmm. there's high security so not just anybody can get into this parts cage right oh no 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 uh it's it's only the inventory team has access and then director level and higher so so directors can come in and look at at the product but yeah uh, even the repair technicians most do not have uh, access to the cage we have Translation, a translation sales people aren't allowed in here nope right? sales people are not allowed <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yep. And and on video, it, I hope it picks it up. It's way down there. Just like each and every single one of these rows is mm -hmm. full of parts. And they're all organized. They're, they all got their tags on them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice organization. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. We strive to, uh, you know, make sure the product is good and make sure we can find it quickly. Since it's oh, medical, yeah, you know, there's always a, a, you know, a quick, quick turnaround. But... Uh, yeah, and we're organized by, by modality. So A through F is all ultrasound, probes, and then parts, and then service parts, and then uh, you know the Samsung and Siemens warehouses at the back. And then uh, G through P is all uh, diagnostic imaging, so that's cath, angio, CT, nuke med, and MRI, coils, and glassware. And then uh, uh, Q through T is, is oncology. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna do a side shot. Okay. But these are only some of your parts because the the larger parts <laughs> must be someplace else because I always see smaller parts in in the cage other than pcs and that that's correct we do have this is our small goods cage okay. we do have large part storage in 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 uh in long-term storage so we pre-crate all of our glassware especially for di so that it can go out at a moment's notice so all of that is kept in inventory in locations in the in long-term storage <coughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so you can see this is, begins our oncology. Wow, look at all the little bins. Oh, yeah. So oncology, uh, there's a lot of small parts. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Holy one, cow. One of the fastest turnover products we have are these uh, MLC motors. And this is the motors that move the individual blades inside yes. of a yeah. oncology machine. I mean, they go out 25, 30 at a time. So we keep thousands of them in inventory. And these are checked. When they come in the door, they're checked when they go out the door and they're packaged like this and then repackaged for shipping. So you're guaranteed a good one. That's amazing. Yep. Just now I'm getting to the back of the cage. 
-hmm. Holy cow. Yep. Uh, yeah. All right, so we're gonna head away from the cage now uh, and down through the uh, on diagnostic imaging and oncology testing area. So as we go down to the left, down the side of the cage, um, this is where all of those parts are tested and, um, and worked on here. Parts inbound for PO, parts inbound for service delivery, parts outbound for both sale and uh, service delivery as well. And here's our subject matter expert. Uh, we're standing outside of the linear accelerator bunker now. Uh, which is not currently have uh, does not currently have a linear accelerator in it. But uh, we can show you what we just pulled out. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a bunker. That's this giant cement structure. It's not the back of the building, guys. This is a. How, how thick are those walls? They're four, four feet. feet thick, top, they, bottom, and sides. They handle yeah. about 23 million electrons. Holy cow. And look at, for scale. <laughs> look how thick this door is. <laughs> it has to be a neutron door. It has to be that thick because once the high energy photons start bouncing around, it can make neutrons. Right. And we gotta make sure the door can handle keeping the neutrons in the bunker. Excellent. Terry, will you introduce yourself, please? Sir? Uh, Terry Tupasak. Um, I've worked on these machines for about 17 years. I've been in electronics for about 30 years. So, um, in the building, I'm responsible for all the parts that go out, they're uh, tested, make sure they're good before they go out to the engineers. Wow, amazing. So, this is where they actually do the output tests on the machine? This is where we actually beam on for the big beam. Now, we okay. can do KV in all the bays because they're all lead shielded. Right. This is we have to do the major uh, beam on test in the bunker because it just puts out too much radiation to do right. anywhere else. Right, that's amazing. That's a very expensive endeavor to uh, build a bunker like this in order to uh, even have that modality. That's crazy. It is, and uh, is it right, Terry? We can do about ninety-five percent of the testing in the in the other bays, but five percent of the testing that we need to do for parts and and for the full uh, linear accelerators needs to be done in here because of the because of the beam on testing that's been being done. So um, there aren't many of these in the country. Amazing. Yeah, yeah I've, I've never seen one uh, other than in a hospital, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the only place I've ever seen uh, mm -hmm. linear accelerator testing. I yep. can't think of any, I've been around a lot, and <laughs> I can't think of anywhere that would have a bunker just for testing, besides a factory for varying and whatnot for a third party. So know. how many manufacturers do you guys support for linear accelerators? Three. Three? Electa, Siemens, and Varian. Okay. Siemens stopped making uh, linear accelerators about 10, 12 years ago. Electa still makes them, and of course, Varian is the Cadillac of linear accelerators. But Siemens end up buying out Varian within the last year or so, I think. Right. So, yeah. Amazing. Do you want to pan inside the door? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this, guys. And again, uh, at this time, we've just removed a linear accelerator from the bunker, so it's awaiting its next uh, tenant. Hello. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't we won't shut you in. It's see, I wish I could convey a video how cold it is in this room. Well, I asked you know, those machines get pretty hot. Well, yeah. just the, just the concrete as a heat sink itself, it's amazing. And we even have air conditioning around because even as cold as it is, that machine puts out five hundred thousand BTUs when it's being done. So Are you serious? Yeah, we got. Take a look at the floor, guys. You can see the mounting points for it. It's amazing. That's so expensive to even try this. And the gantry lives in here all the time, right? Yeah, I'll show you the gantry in the stand out here. There you move it. Some places you have to break it in half, the gantry from the stand, but here we just keep it both together. It makes it a little bit easier to remove and to put back in. Wow. Don't worry guys, we'll cover all those areas just as well. <laughs> Look. 
what a crazy, crazy system. I'll show you the machines. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Cramped oh, up. I, I'm so thankful for this, this, oh, yeah. this tripod. Well, this is just the gantry. This is a gantry and a stand still connected. So we try to move, remove it in one piece, a lot easier. And I think there's like 30 bolts or something like that that's connected with the gantry bearing there. So it's a lot easier. A lot of people have never seen linear accelerators with the doors and all the, the covers off. So is this unit, this unit's leading? It's, it's uh... No, we, okay. we own it for now. Okay. Holy cow. Look how tall it is. <laughs> I think the gantry weighs about 20,000 pounds, which is so good. You got the head that basically weighs about 10,000 and a 10,000 pound counterweight. So if you got about 20,000 pounds rotating in your bearing. Holy cow. With less than a quarter of a millimeter of movement. Because everything's based on isocent, 100 cm. So if you put a needle out at 100 cm and a needle this way, it will have less than a quarter of a millimeter walkout. That's really? how precise that 20,000 pound gantry is. That's almost unheard of. Well, when you're uh, radiating people, radiating the <laughs> brains, you got to make sure you're, you know, within a half Precise. a millimeter. Yeah. That's, so, I mean, just the mass that you're moving. That precisely. Yeah. Wow. Making sure that radiation goes where you tell it's going. That's so cool. Yep. All right. So yeah. if you if you look down that way, also, Justin, um, it's a, it, it's more long-term storage. Uh, some of the cores uh, along the left side there and all the way back in the corner is our paint booth where we do uh, our refurbishing work. So all of the panels and covers from, from the equipment that we sell and service we can refurbish back there matching the OEM colors and uh, so that we can deliver it like new when it, when it arrives. And all those shelves right there, that's all your large parts, right? The, the ones that can't fit in the cage? Well, these are uh, core tunes we're waiting to hopefully one day we can Oh, okay. Yeah. Or we, we experiment, so that repair. that's part of you guys' expansion is you're going to get into tube repair and stuff in, in the very near future. Some tubes we can repair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some we just put there, hoping one day, like, kind of like when people keep out jangly frozen. One day. You're <laughs> well, I, I get it because there's so much money tied up into just the cores alone. Right. That's amazing. And as you look similar to what Josh shared with you guys inside the cage, if, as you look at the blue racks through here. And Tom, you may have to help me, but ultrasound is the first couple of racks, and then we go back modality by, by modality, right? That's correct. Okay. Those racks don't only just hold um, core core returns, but they also hold the systems that we purchase. Uh, we will, we'll put them all stored in each in their own bay until we get to the point where we want to either harvest them, take them into the QA bays, which you're going to see in a few minutes, to, and, and stage them in there. Uh, so that we can refurbish them and, and, and uh, install them in a new customer site. Wow. So there's a lot of just storage over that way. It's not the most glamorous part of the warehouse. For it, sure. it doesn't have to be. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing uh, how high these warehouse racks are. They're like, what, 20 foot up? 23. Okay. It is absolutely amazing. And you said uh, you got a, your own paint booth so that yes. you're... Uh, you yeah, that, that structure over in the corner okay. is all the paint booths where we refurbish all the uh, cosmetic portion of, of the systems. Okay. You know, you can have a great, great working system, but if it looks bad... I understand completely. So when you guys get something in, you, you basically restore it to like new OEM specifications oh, right right we go through we replace the, the parts that wear out most often and replace any parts that have worn out any parts that don't work refurbish all the covers and uh, test it calibrate it get it ready for installation wow all right excellent what's next guys let's do it oh my QA god QA base QA base I know that's a long walk <laughs> <laughs>
down that way you're looking now, Justin, is these three bays here are the three um, three other linear accelerator bays. So these are shielded, but of course not able to do the, this is where we do the majority of the testing. Okay. So. Can you do the light x-ray? Can you do the pet x-ray? Understood. I think this is the best explanation of what's really going on with a linear accelerator. This is a cement base. We kind of use this as our over test base. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Oh, here. How big this is. We try to build a lot of test jigs. Like what's going on right here is basically the inside of the variant machine that we have on this bench. Really? We don't have to put a bunch of parts in the machine. We just test them right here. Quicker, faster. We're not tying up a whole machine with some tests. So one of our guys that he's retired from the field he put all this together, he's working on it. He's got it about 50% done. So basically anything that, like I want to test the motor, instead of putting it inside the machine there, everything's external here. So I can look it up externally, test it in five minutes versus an hour it might take to put it in the machine. Wow. And I do a little bit of testing on the Siemens, but 90% of our parts that we go, that go out are varying parts. Is that down there, is that the collimator? This is the MLC. That's the part of the head that collimates, so I can show you. Uh, hopefully, we have the MLC oh. running over there. That looks very heavy. <laughs> yeah, each <laughs> bank. That's how I think of things in yeah, terms of the cost think, and weight. I think that's like 1,500 pounds, something like that. Yeah, holy cow. It's tungsten, mostly and tungsten. It, and there is a lot of moving parts inside that. I can tell by the ball screws. About you, 600 you, some parts just in the MLC alone. Wow. That's counting every leaf, every motor, yeah, every spring. Actually, no more than that. If it can go wrong, it will. And that over there looks like a test bench, too. That is. That's our MLC test. Instead of doing it on the head, once again, we have an external. Since we do have small wheels in the MLC test, we have it external into the machine. That way, we don't have to. Well, that really makes sense. I, I don't know of anybody else that does stuff like that, though. Um, because other places I've been to, they test on the machine. I get that. It's all about efficiency, being able to How you doing, sir? Or or right. get that out to a customer and off to a site to restore the unit to use. This is actually a test bench. Yes, it is. It's amazing. There's different software versions here. So we can test different software versions. Yeah, basically anything 6, 8 and lower is kind of one set. And above six eighths, kind of different. So we, depending on what boards we have, we have to use a different computer or different software to test them. So basically, that is what goes on the head right there. You can see there, right? And as you can tell, it's a lot easier to work out here than it is on that. Oh, completely. That is so cool. Okay. I've ever looked inside a linear uh, accelerator. Very cool. Very nice meeting you. Oh, I knew you got a nice meeting you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks, Terry. I love talking about this stuff, as you can tell. Oh, man. I'm a nerd. And I, I love this stuff. I mean, you're accelerating electrons to almost the speed of light. Right. So, 
here's here's the crazy thing, and, and something I just learned recently is you take a normal X-ray, and, and uh, how many kV is a normal X-ray? 100, 140, depending okay. on what you're doing. And then you got CT. How much is that probably? Around the same. I think. Okay. How much is this? 18 million versus uh, 140,000. 18, 20 million. So that's why you guys need the extra shield units yes. because the uh, the well, energy. The punch. Just right. The punch. Needed. Right. The amount of energy that you have there, you have to have that thick of shielding, which is the crazy thing about it, and. Probably also why I've never seen anybody else set one up for testing. Is Either that, you gotta have lead or a lot of thick concrete. Right. Wow, that's so cool. So everything around the outside of the of the room uh, is cath angio base. Uh, and then here in the center are all CT, all CT now, right? Yeah, all CT basically. So yeah, I noticed a lot of the blue scaffolding. So that's that's so that you guys have options, right? Right, most of the cath labs are ceiling mounted. Right. So we need to get that L-arm up on something. Okay. And as we walk through here, Justin, you'll see equipment in all kind of different states, right? Uh, s some that are finished all the way and uh, used for testing or staging prior to sale. Uh, others that, as you can see here when we go by, that are, uh, that are kind of put together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, these bays are really the workhorse of the whole outfit. Yeah. I mean, this is where everything gets tested, everything gets mixed. That's the differentiation. So you guys are constantly uh, buying and selling units as well. Mm -hmm. So that means that you would have to like strip them down, bring them in here, assemble them, test them out. Yes. You know, and then make sure they're functional. And then you have to break them all down. So I mean, if it looks like there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of different stages of repair and stuff, that's because you guys are because there are. Constantly <laughs> <busy>. <laughs> yep, that's right. Oh, so wow. the majority of these bays have a system that will live in there for a while, a good long while, as our test base. A couple of these bays we're gonna come up on now are our staging bays, which I referred to earlier for capital sale, for installation of systems. Okay. So these bays will see traffic in and out, in and out all the time. So, do you guys have a variety of different electrical already staged in these rooms? Because, you know, different systems require different yes. power sources, right? Yeah. When we laid it out, we had the electricians come in and, and put the proper power into each bay. Okay. Uh, 483 phase is, is the predominant one. Okay. There are a couple others that need a, a separate feed, different amperage. So this whole first section here, is this is all general electric. You guys test out the video system and everything as well, like before it ships out. We do. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Wow. It's not a whole lot of anything without the video, right? Oh, that's <laughs> very true. And we sell and support the large format monitors as well. Oh, okay. Really? I know those are expensive. They are. Jeez. They are. This bay, for example, we're just starting to bring a, a Phillips FD system in, an Aurora. Wow. That's so cool. So I heard that when you guys have a system that you're going to sell, that the same people break it down that are going to install it at the new facility. Wow. Because 90%. Because a lot of places that stay here, they'll contract it out. They'll, they'll contract out the installation team. So. That's no. interesting. So you guys can use your own technicians and so that they verify that every single thing's working, they're personally accountable, and they're the ones that break it down and they install it. Okay. Yeah. That's right. We don't like to uh, hand our work on to somebody else because understood. You can control the quality. So That's right. Hundred percent accountability. Yep. This 
one's a little unusual for us, but uh, it's, a, it's a PET CT setup. Oh, cool. That we're getting ready to install out in, I think, Oklahoma. Okay. Wow. So you got a bunch of covers off. So it's just going through final testing. Yeah, that's the middle of the Okay. Look at this. Look what is hiding back here. What? See, it might not look like much, but guys, this is a robot that's the size of a Volkswagen. Look at it. I seen the coil up in the ceiling and I immediately knew what it was. Yeah. See that up there? When we got this in, we noticed that there was some cracking in the metal. There okay. Was some cracking down on this part. So this is all going to get pulled out and replaced. Oh, and man. Repaired. Look at the scale. We'll put Look at the scale of together. those motors, guys. You see, I, I cover a lot of motor technology and motor drivers. I wonder what NEMO format these guys are. Look how massive they are. Oh my gosh, there's three of them on the back. So, uh, when it comes to KUKA, are, are you guys trained on KUKA robots? We have KUKA trained. Okay. That's wild. That's so cool. So this type of thing we find in hybrid OR rooms all the time. Um, so that is very cool that they have one here in their facility. Hello. Another GE system we put in. This one's being refurbished for sale. Okay. I know they don't look great without the covers on them, but they're all down. No, down no, at the other end. That's the most miles fascinating away. thing about them is when the covers off. <laughs> yeah, remember, people that are watching this video are going to be nerds. That's that's a promise. <laughs> Start to get into our Phillips phase. Okay. <laughs> have a biplane in this particular. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good. Cool. How huge this thing is. Oh, wow. Okay. Over here, <laughs> your cabinets. Okay. See the video system over here, other side. You see these racks? Find these in every bed. Yeah. These are part of the uh, parts sales. So are these parts that are being tested? These, yeah, these are all parts that have been brought in and okay. and. Given the once over, and now they need to be tested to see if they they are working and find out what's wrong. So they come onto this rack okay. from the inventory people that you met a little bit ago, and then the test technicians put them in the system, run them through their paces. So let's say like one of those controllers. Let's say somebody orders a controller. You guys bring it over, you plug it in, you make sure that it works and it's functional, and then it ships. It goes to the new exactly. Home. First of all, it, when it comes in, it gets it gets repaired refurbished, you know, okay. made pretty again, goes on the shelf. We get an order for it, it comes back off the shelf, goes back into the bay, test it immediately just to make sure, you know, electronics have a habit of breaking. So it's retested before it's sent out again. We got going down on the floor level. <laughs> Very neat. So 
just in the last two calf bays down here are our training bays. Okay. So we certainly use them for testing like we do other bays or, or staging as well. But, and we'll go into the training room a little while later, but uh, this is the hands, where the hands-on work for our training classes are done. So. So the, the majority of our, these are typically a, a Siemens uh, cat lab here and a Phillips next door for training bays. Um, and, and this is where, like I said, the hands-on work is done for all of our training classes. So we offer training to customers and uh, they can, there's a little bit of class work, of course. Uh, try not to do too much death by PowerPoint during that time, but uh, then probably 80% of the time they're in here learning about what's you know, P everything from PMs down to diagnosing, troubleshooting, and repairing. So to make your education more streamlined, do you give the students prerequisites before they even show up on site? Like, do they have uh, pre-learning to understand the uh, physiology behind what's going on or anything? Probably so, but in, in some cases we do kind of an intro as well to, to get them ready. So, yeah, Depends on the, the, the capabilities and competencies of the Right. Right. Uh, As a sales guy, I'm pretty sure I don't have the prerequisites. Pre uh, prerequisites, sorry, but uh, so I might be a challenging student. I'm out of this village. So if there's a large format that has an artifact or something in it, you guys can get it shipped in and you guys can repair the monitor yourself? We got to work. Okay. Really this That's amazing. That's a huge monitor. Very expensive. Yeah. And it's all they want now. Yeah. Nobody wants the four bond to put No. <laughs> Definitely not. So that's the perimeter here. That's all the cath lab stuff. Now all of this are all the different kinds of CTs. Uh, and then it'll be the same same three, Siemens, Philips, and General Electric. Okay. Uh, but there are so many different kinds from each uh, OEM. Right now we have 24 different CT systems still. How many cath labs total staged at present? Now, if I remember right, those tubes are like two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars each, something like that. They're crazy expensive. They are. So, so that's like especially so the arts people have gone through these and, and diagnosed the various stages of destruction. Okay. So, so to speak. Well, that's and why so we have them set up in a different way, so in priority for them to start working on. I get it. There's a lot of money potential uh, in tubes. Right there, that uh, it floats on uh, basically an air bearing. It's 
instead of using a traditional bearing than many of the other manufactured models. A lot of machines, guys. <laughs> That's a lot of machines. Yeah, of course. Like I say, we're gonna knock that whole section that you're looking out yep. right now. That's all gonna be cleaned out. So now we're uh, transitioning from the CT and cath labs and into the probe repair lab. Uh, where we're standing right now is our test area for all probe, uh, probe repair that we do. So I'd like to introduce JT Bailey, who's the manager of our probe repair lab, and he's going to walk us through. All right. Well, if you look over here, so all the systems that we have, uh, this is what we use for our live scanning on our ultrasound, for our ultrasound probes. Uh, so we can test most manufacturers, all the major manufacturers, GE, Philips, Siemens, Sonosite. Uh, we have a breadth of equipment that we can use. Um, so everything we do here from our scan testing, we can do a scan test through all the different modes, modes on the probes. Um, and then we use a tissue mimicking phantom as well as our actual tissue to, to verify the repairs that we're completing and the function of the probes. So this is the probe lab. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is ultrasound probe repair. Uh, in here, we can uh, repair anything from basic cosmetic repairs to advanced electrical reterminations and array repairs. Uh, we can repair upwards to 200 different models on various different manufacturers. Uh, and then we repair various different types of probes as well. Um, so that'll include linear probes, in the cavity, uh, curved linear, and we also do some phase sector array in addition to TE probes with uh, transesophageal probes. Wow, amazing. So you guys pretty much handle everything, crystal, resheathing, rewiring, reterminations? Correct. Wow, it's so, so quiet in here and it's so <laughs> clean. Look how clean it is. Uh, everybody's laser focused. <laughs> So um, kind of going into you know, the first step of probe repair, uh, we have the initial inspection process, uh, which we showed a little bit of out there, but there's a, a little bit more to it. So as, as probes come in the door, one of the first things that we do is disinfect the probe for a second time. Um, the second thing is what I call a lens to pins evaluation, uh, visual inspection, that is, <clears throat> to physically evaluate the probe for any defects. Um, from there, we'll actually perform electrical leakage testing uh, to make sure there's not any type of leakage issues. And then after that, what we will do will be our acoustic and electrical integrity testing with our TC3 stations. Um, so this is very useful to measure the acoustic sensitivity as well as the electrical capacitance and impedance of uh, various different models. Holy cow. Look at this. 
And to follow that up, after we do that testing, that is when we then take it out to do our live scans uh, to make sure we have that practical assessment um, to, to see the different issues. This lab is actually really big. Yeah. Really big. Um, so we'll start down this side. Okay. Um, so the first kind of core function that we have, uh, this is our assembly team. So this is where we'll do replacements of cable assemblies, uh, array repairs. So it's very tedious work in disassembling the probes to make sure you do it without damaging it. And then also reassembling it to make sure it's set in its proper form. So as we keep going, uh, we have our cosmetic and lens repair. Um, so as you look over here, cosmetic repairs will consist of all your basic refurbishment, um, cable patches, strain relief reattachments, replacements. Uh, we can actually, we make molds out of OEM uh, strain reliefs and we can use those to make a repeatable process uh, to continue for replacements. You know, there's a growing trend that I'm starting to see here is that you guys are creating your own processes to solve problems because you have no other options, you know, when it comes correct. to getting some of these things repaired. That is very, very much correct. Yeah, we, we are not handed any type of uh, OEM instruction, so it's, it's very much a figuring it out, making sure we're restoring it back to its proper function. Wow. So um, going into lens repair, uh, you'll see we have some probe set now. Yeah, Similar to our strain reliefs is we'll create molds of an OEM unit. So that's what these guys are doing? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, we'll create mo molds of OEM units um, and then we'll be able to use those molds to create again another repeatable process. Okay. Uh, and lens is a very uh, hot, hot repair. You see this area is always, we're, we're batching quite a few different things going on over here. Okay. So um, I guess we'll go TE repair. So another thing that we do, so as I mentioned, one of the types of uh, probes that we work on are TE probes, so transesophageal probes. Uh, these are the probes that physically go down the esophagus to scan the underside of the heart. <clears throat> so we have a team dedicated to that, um, primarily because they're a little bit more nuanced and, and mechanically involved. So you'll see some of the issues that we, we have are uh, common failure points like holes in the bending rubber, which is very common. Um, it's important to make sure that we catch that early uh, so that way fluid doesn't intrude and cause any type of catastrophic damage or at least more expensive damage. And we also still do some of the older TE probes. They're a little bit more mechanical in nature as far as their calibration. Um, we still repair those. Most of the newer probes like the Philix X72T and the Philips X82T are uh, matrix array. So there's no mechanical calibration. It's all digital. Um, but they literally have thousands of different elements that are, are handled by ASIC inside of the array. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of cool That's stuff. That's interesting. I didn't know that. So over here we have our, our return team. We have some on vacation right now too. Um, so these ladies are the ones doing all the cable reterminations. So they're doing all the cable reterminations and, and we're talking about hundreds of different conductors that are literally the size of a human hair. Um, so this is a very tedious role. Um, takes a special person to sit here under a microscope and, and do the soldering all day. I would agree. It's the equivalent of a neurosurgeon. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's pretty amazing, for sure. So um, I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention our, uh, our coordinator team, too. Um, so, you know, as we do repairs, our team kind of holds the glue, keeps everything running, operating effectively. Wow. That's a lot of steps for uh, ultrasound probe repair. So one of the misconceptions is that the OEMs are the only ones that are capable and qualified in order to repair some of these probes. But as you guys can see, it's a laboratory quality condition here, and you guys can do it. That's no problem. Absolutely. It's amazing. Absolutely. At a fraction of the cost. That's right. So for the next segment of the tour, I'd like to introduce Chris Parker, Repair Operations Manager here for the Charlotte Center of Excellence. Hey guys, welcome aboard and uh, let's, take, let's take you for a ride.
All right, so you're coming into our repair our repair lab here at our Charlotte Center of Excellence. Uh, what you'll see in here is uh, kind of a multitude of things. Uh, we do multi-modality repair, so we support all branches that we that we do in this facility here. So obviously you've kind of seen so far in this video uh, that we support our diagnostic imaging, ultrasound, and oncology. So in this lab we're doing PC repair, uh, component level repair, uh, assembly level repair as far as like chillers, pumps, compressors, things like that, and also MRI coil repair. So we'll kind of step you through and kind of show you some of what we're doing here. So as you as you see here, we have uh, a multitude of test beds lined up here. We made a huge investment in systems, and these are literally here just for testing PCs. So this is our PC repair area. Uh, all these are set up obviously just for ultrasound, but we also do diagnostic imaging PC repair in here as well. Uh, so we support cath labs, we're doing some CT stuff in here, so kind of kind of doing some special things in this lab. So we'll kind of step through. Uh, one thing you'll notice as we kind of walk through here is uh, one of the investments we made is in a lot of the test equipment. Um, obviously when you have these types of tools, they help us do our job better, they help us find problems better in an easier way, make us more efficient. So you'll kind of see that as we walk through some special stuff that we've invested in. So over here in this area, we have our component level repair team set up. And these are the magicians, as I call them. These guys are, these are the magic makers. So these guys are actually artists, as I like to call them too, because it's kind of a lost art being able to go in and troubleshoot circuits and, and solder. Soldering is actually a lost art too, as many of you know. But these guys are basically doing component level repair on ultrasound, diagnostic imaging, and oncology parts in here. So. Another thing you'll notice in this lab too, uh, we've made our own commitment to uh, continuous improvement and 5S standards. So if you notice, the, the lab is very organized. It's laid out in a certain platform, and we maintain this uh, weekly and daily, basically, our standards here. You know, one of the things I'm definitely noticing is everywhere we go, it's like laboratory cleanliness. Yes. Like, look at the floors, they're shining. This is amazing. Yeah, so this team in here, they basically, they clean every day. We clean every day in here. We organize our stations every day before we leave. And at the end of every week, we, we mop. Sometimes we mop two times a week, depending on the traffic. But uh, I always feel that an organized workspace is a productive and efficient workspace. So that's why we kind of committed to doing that in here. I completely agree. Yeah, so some of the things you'll see with us working on in here, uh, we got a guy right here right now. It's one of my technicians, Scott. He's actually working on a <laughs> con control panel uh, for ultrasound. So he's actually troubleshooting this down, trying to find uh, an issue with it, with a component. So um, we do a lot of control panel repair here for multi-OEM, uh, multi-vendor, so to speak, um, as well as for everything else, the diagnostic imaging stuff, which we'll see later on down the line here. We do a lot of control panels for diagnostic imaging uh, as well. all the boards yeah heavy board repair so lots of component level an repair. machine yep you have Some an x-ray machine yep so we also have a bga re rework machine here okay. uh eprom station for programming eprom devices uh, we have 3d scanners 3d printers just for prototyping internal use for engineering things like that um, so we've definitely made a huge investment in tools, as I mentioned earlier. We have a solder fountain for certain certain things that you know you can't just hand solder. So we've made a pretty big investment with that. Wow. So nice. a lot of tools you'll see in a manufacturing environment. So we kind of showed you guys you know, one set of test beds for ultrasound that we invested in, but now you're gonna see another set here. And basically these are set up literally just for testing our boards that we repair, boards and power supplies. So the, the systems that you saw earlier are literally here just for PCs. These are set up just for doing boards and power supplies and also monitor testing. So we've definitely made a huge investment in the equipment here. Yeah, that's a lot of money in medical equipment. So as we step through, 
the next part of our lab here, uh, these, this team over here is, we're doing DI repair as far as, uh, I call it assembly mechanical. So we're doing more, um, we do control modules, foot switches, chillers, air compressors, pumps, things like that. So that's what this team's primarily dealing with over here. Uh, we do do some, some component level troubleshooting over here as well. Uh, we have an engineer that's set up doing that. Uh, a little more specific projects, but um, the main focus of this team is more DI level repairs. Okay. Wow. So here's a question for you. Sure. So you don't have schematics for a lot of this stuff. Actually, you probably have schematics for almost none of this stuff. That's right. So that means that these guys aren't just like electrical engineers. They, they have to reverse engineer what you got going on just to learn what's going how to fix it yeah that's correct so most of our team here has an average average person has about 20 years of experience so a lot of experience here in this lab multitude of backgrounds things like that very diverse so each person brings a different type of talent and yes being able to take some of these parts on the bench and reverse engineering is absolutely an art form without schematics so Amazing. Definitely a big deal. We got sure. one of the coolest things going on in here. We got a whole bunch of coils. Yep. And yeah, so we do do MRI coil repair. As you can see over here, we have this setup. Uh, he's actually troubleshooting one now on the bench. And so this is another, you know, obviously a talent uh, component level experience, but also uh, RF experience, things like that. It's, it's very specialized. So uh, one thing I'll note while we're talking about this too, in our lab here, all of our repair technicians that do any type of soldering are IPC certified. So we take okay. that very serious here. We have uh, trainers on site that, that do the training every two years. So we always maintain that standard. And also we are, you know, ISO 1345, so we follow those standards as well. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You can see how complex some of this stuff really is. That is so cool. big lab and this is just part of your lab this is see some stuff going on over there <laughs> so you have more engineers yeah we can take a walk next door yeah so this next door here is our advanced repair lab so we are set up here to obviously you mentioned not having schematics right so one of the things we have to do and the challenges we face is trying to figure out how do we how do we get from point b back to point a right when we're troubleshooting something so the team next door here is primarily set up to help us with that so we could take a part and basically break it down go backwards with it and figure out how it fails the trends things like that and then basically create, create a repair process around it Okay. So when, so that, when that happens, then that process basically gets transferred to my repair team next door here. So these guys are the ones that come up with how things are going to get repaired. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and, and of course, as, a, as ISO 1345, right, the, those quality standards and work instructions have to be written. So after they figure out what to do, they'll write it out so the folks next door can do it. Yeah. Okay. Additionally, they'll develop service strategies for our engineers in the field as well as training curriculum for both internal and external customers. Yeah. Yep. All right, welcome to the arts department. Um, arts stands for advanced repair and technical solutions. Uh, so that encompasses the, our technical support staff, which we have uh, engineers with 200 plus years experience um, for different manufacturers. We have Siemens, CT, Siemens MR, GE Cath, Philips Cath. We have modality experts for each uh, make and manufacturer um, that they provide um, uh, they help develop the curriculum for the training courses. They develop the parts testing procedures after the repair process has been done. Uh, QA, QC procedures. Um, they help with the remote platform, troubleshooting, tech support. Um, uh, that's it for the... <laughs> How many engineers do you have? Um, total engineers, we have about 140 uh, across the country. Um, on the technical solutions team, we have about 12. Wow, amazing. So this is where the magic happens. This is where they come up with the processes for repairing and it goes to other teams where they carry it out. 
Correct. Yeah. So this team will. Um, this team itself. So the technical solutions team has. 200 plus years experience. This team has in engineers ranging from five years experience to 40 plus years experience on it. So this is the team that will develop the repair process as well as the um, QC process for testing it after the repair. So after the repair is done, it goes through a full testing procedure, bench testing as well as system testing to make sure that parts, uh, the part that the engineers receive is, is a quality part and it's gonna work the first time. Amazing. I'm fortunate enough to, uh, my name is Andy Wheeler, I'm fortunate enough to be the president of our remote diagnostics platform. Uh, with that system, we were able to take that wonderful brain power from our tech support staff, uh, bring it into a uh, cloud-based platform, and provide state-of-the-art new solutions to our customers to really empower our, uh, our customers and our partners to uh, provide much better service and faster timely of service. So. Uh, we're really excited about the, the new uh, features and evolution of those products. Okay. So obviously these are our workbenches. Some of the engineers have their individual workbenches and then we have benches that other engineers within the facility can come and use. Um, they're all set up with soldering stations, proper tools that are needed, certain test jigs and stuff that are used uh, for some of the parts repair. Um, this is Kevin's desk. He's doing, he does a lot of our PC repair for the, uh, the PCs used in uh, Philips Cath, um, Siemens CT, Siemens MRI. We do a lot of PC repair here. Okay. So if somebody has a hard failure on a PC, they can just ship it in. And uh, do you guys have replacement units, or are you going to repair their unit? Yeah, so we, we send everything out um, on exchange. So we get the core back, and we'll try to fix that core and send it back out. Um, we don't really do any depot level repair on those systems. And there's a, there's a particular reason that we do that, because we do a ton of testing here. So this team is, is the brain power to figure out what fails within these units. Uh, we'll go through these units once we are in production with that work instruction. We'll go through these units and replace all of the things that are wear items and that we know can fail. Um, but we also do a tremendous amount of testing. A lot of times in, in depot repair with things from PCs to MRI coils, you have a lot of issues where you fix what's wrong, but if you're too quick to get it out into the field, then you continue to have problems. Uh, if you test it and you, spend the, you do the proper testing, uh, that takes some time. Um, so we try to keep the, the, um, the model as an exchange model, but uh, we try to keep our prices down, you know, try to get them as close to depot repair as we can. But we know that when we're sending exchange, those, those parts are well tested and they're going to work. So when you guys have these type of failures and, and you actually discover what the root cause is, do you keep like that data someplace where you can use it for future use? Absolutely. And, and when we do a repair, we don't just come in and fix the actual, it might just be one issue that's wrong with the system. So our repair process, once we uh, you know, find something that's commonly failed, even if that hasn't failed on that particular part, it's still replaced. So it's, it's not just a break fix, it's a full refurbishment for that part. Okay, that makes sense. Wow, amazing. Yep. And we'll show you some of what we're doing with remote diagnostics. So our, our remote services platform um, entails not just remote monitoring, but remote diagnostics and remote services. So there's differentiation there. Um, obviously, uh, you can see behind us that we have a number of setups back here. Um, that really is the core functionality of our remote monitoring. Uh, things like cryogenic services for the um, uh, front end of, of magnets, to, or back end of magnets to uh, look at the helium levels, the pressures. We have all of that. There's a number of products in the industry that, that provide that. We, we do all of that in, in concert with also remote diagnostics where we take diagnostic errors, uh, different uh, information off of the systems, and really create a, an empowerment to, to show what that actually means. So it's monitoring those systems that are cryogenic, for example, or other um, environmental uh, attributes of, of the system but then also looking at the diagnostics to determine if the system's having a problem, what's really going on. 
And then we also take it a step further uh, with remote services to allow our, and empower our, our team in-house and also our partners to create a, an environment where they can actually interface and sometimes um, uh, interact with the systems to create a, um, uh, to, to perform a service event. Um, so that, that's a, a fully robust, a robust system that is OEM um, agnostic and uh, it covers all of the models that we support and uh, is, is unlike any other in the industry. So this data that you collect, you remote monitor, you share that with the users, uh, the, the service techs that are in the field? Because I know that you guys train service techs, so that means that you guys want to empower the hospital biomeds or, or you know x-ray technicians. Um, yeah, our model's more of a, a support model, so we'd rather be the one supporting the people that are first look at the hospital, because they're going to get there a lot faster than, than we are, obviously. So we want to give them all the tools necessary to be able to fix the equipment as fast as possible. So when you asked about us giving access to our uh, knowledge database, absolutely. So they see exactly what we're seeing, which is also a great training tool as we're looking at the logs with them uh, real time, the same way they are. We can show them, okay, this is why you see this, this, that's why you need this part. That's why, that's why this is the root cause. So we want to empower them to do as much as possible, and we just want to be there for support and for any uh, any issues that, that arise that they're not able to fix themselves. Amazing. And so this is where you develop a lot of those uh, monitoring processes and hardware. Correct. So we made one uh, remote monitoring box that can hook up to any MRI, Siemens, GE, Philips. Um, we've even tested on some of the newest technologies. Um, so one box that can interface with anything. Um, as well as our remote service platform is one platform that can pretty much interface with any system. So it's one interface for all, we're brand agnostic, so we don't care what you're working on. There's not many hospitals that have, you know, all Siemens or all Philips. So we're really the only company that can provide that remote diagnostics platform and, um, for all makes and models. And we used a, we used a strategy to keep it simple. Um, and to make sure that we had singular connections to the, the network for both monitoring and with our other diagnostics. Everything is in the secure cloud. Uh, so uh, IT security, as well as the ability to increase and scale services is all through one connection and is all very simple to maintain and, uh, and, and pleases the, the IT security departments that we, we have to work with. And what about I, uh, patient data? Because that's one thing that's definitely gonna come up. They're, they're, you're touching their x-ray machine. What about patient data? Do you guys collect that? Absolutely not. So we do not collect any, the only stuff we're collecting off of the systems is logs and stuff that are used for troubleshooting purposes that are generated by the machine. We do not collect any patient data or HIPAA, HIPAA information on just, any of our just systems. Just machine diagnostic data. Amazing. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, guys. One other thing that we're going to point out to you guys is that they do schooling here. They, they train people. So not just an x-ray. You can see we got ultrasound. And uh, since I am so curious about what they do here, I'm going to leave it to Dustin. He's going to talk us through it. What do we do? Because this is a big, big room, guys. Yeah, so obviously we don't just do training here. We have our uh, company meetings here. Um, we have quite a few employees in this facility, so it still doesn't see them all, but in most cases we can jam in here. Um, but we also do, uh, we do a lot of the ultrasound training in here. So we run about 15 ultrasound classes a year. Um, it's very hands-on, so we can bring the systems in here. Um, they're tearing them apart, putting them back together, troubleshooting, going over repair processes. So it's good, we can have about eight people in those classes, so this gives us a lot of room to be able to tear them down and, and not have to deal with space um, issues. Um, as far as our DI classes goes, so for the CT, cath labs, we try to run those once a quarter, and we do in-house training as well as external training. We don't advertise the external training as much because we uh, wait until we get a, a number of people interested that are cust or customers or based on contracts that have been signed that are first look or they need to get their engineers trained, then we'll add a class. Um, but we're also, we'll also add a class if somebody says, hey, we have two people that we need trained, we'll schedule a class and get those two people in here. And so there's a lot of companies that'll schedule four people from their company and send them here, and we'll get that on the books. The big thing about the big iron classes, as we call them, is we're in here maybe, they're usually a week long, and we're in here maybe three hours of the whole class. Everything else is done on the systems. So I'd rather, I'm a big hands-on person, and most people learn better that way, we've found. 
So I'm rather than going over power diagrams and stuff like that, I'm gonna we're gonna go over the diagrams, but we're gonna show you on the system where that is, what that is. And so we find that people learn better by hands-on. So 90% of our classes for big iron and ultrasound are on the equipment. So we're not death by PowerPoint. That's excellent. And I'm gonna leave information regarding the training schedules and, and possible classes and stuff in the video description so that you guys can reach out if you're interested and uh, we'll try and get you a quote and uh, maybe get you on schedule. But wait, there's something else that we missed. Let's go ahead and take a look outside at the mobile fleet. I saved the best for last. Okay, all right guys. So for one of the last things that we're gonna cover are the mobile imaging units. And there's a variety of them. We got what, MR, we got some CT. Um, cath lab. Uh, cath, you got a mobile cath lab? We do. Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's stuff I didn't even figure. But guys, we're gonna go and take a look on the inside of these. I have never been inside one of these mobile trailers. I've only seen them on social media. So this is gonna be a first for me as well as for many of you viewers. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the mobile program consists of. Because guys, if you ever have an emergency outage, there's a natural disaster, if you have a hard failure on one of your uh, in-house systems, we can lease one of these or you, for long-term, whatever, we can arrange so that you can have one of these delivered to your site and that way there your downtime is minimized. Let's say that your budget doesn't allow for a very hefty repair, you can lease one of these, it makes up for that loss and you're back up and running. So. Guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this trailer and see what it looks like. All right, we're going to start with a GE16X MRI. Okay. Um, this is probably the ugliest of the three. Okay. It's, because it's safe it's, for me it's, to, it's to go so in with in. Like, uh, my phone and stuff, right? It is. It is to a certain point in the trailer. Okay. Oh, the first thing I'll tell you is that it feels good in here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this. We got, uh, we got vinyl so, floors, we got the console. It's, it's a very, very compact area. Um, right here is the roll-up door. Okay, so is that where the patient comes in? This is exactly right. Okay. This, this would fold down, the whole thing lets down. Okay. Roll the table in, or the bed, I'm sorry. Bring it up, take them right in. Oh wow! Um, so does I, the patient come in on the MR table? Is is that how this happens? If if they have to. Okay. Um, you know, if they're mobile, they can walk in, or right. or be put brought in in a wheelchair. It depends now, on their state. I can hear that characteristic chiller. That. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna so, go ahead and open this door because it's the only way you're gonna be able to see it. Yep, there it is. That's the sound. Oh wow! It feels good in there. It's nice and cool. I cannot believe that you guys fit this oh, inside yeah. a trailer. You see how tight it is. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. And a lot of the work is done from, from the back of the trailer. There's a, a door or a hatch back there. So it's, it's, it's actually very cool in here, not only because we got helium and we've got a chiller that we got to worry about, but you know, for staff convenience, that's one of the things I would always worry about with a trailer is that it's going to be hot and stuffy in there. Right. It actually feels just like a hospital environment. Oh, they're, very, they're all very cool because of the equipment. Okay. Very cool, physically and metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool. All right, so we have uh, our console right here. Uh, oh, MedRad injectors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything I would expect. Right back here, if we can uh, flip around a little bit, make sure the light's on. This is where the, uh, the equipment room is. This is where the cabinets are. Oh, cool. And if you want to see these. It's a little bit loud in here, guys. I hope that you can hear me. But we've got some uh, and those phantoms. Are all the coils. We've got extra coils. Oh, it's so cold in here. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, I'm being blasted. They, they have a huge AC chiller on the front of this trailer. I got some more coils, our, our, our emergency shutoff. This is actually more convenient than I see in some uh, installs and facilities. Yeah, and, and the added benefit is if the power even goes down at the facility, 
there's a generator on the front of this that'll kick in and keep you working. Oh, okay. Well, that definitely makes sense. Wow. So, uh, what about the electrical connections for this? There's a massive electrical cord out there. So, what electrical supply does it take to power one of these trailers? These trailers all take 480 volt, three phase. Okay. Because 120 amp. Power. The cord is like that big around. It's absolutely monstrous. Do you see that cord down there? That is crazy. But it's a complete MR system, and it's in a trailer. You can just roll it up, and uh, even if you didn't have MR capabilities, you do now. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what you got in some of the other trailers. This is a uh, Sensation 64. Oh, we put that in as a brand new trailer. Well, that's a, it's actually a pretty old trailer. Oh, really? Really? It looks yeah. Did you want to see that? Sure, sure. Okay. Heck yeah. Wow, this one's more spacious. Very nice. Oh, it feels good in here too. This is an older um, CT, the Sensation 64 by Siemens, okay. but it's a real workhorse. It's almost always out on the road. People really? love these. We have two of these actually. One of them's out right now, and this one's in, has just come back in, and we'll be heading back out. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, you got your injector, you got a portable sink, you got a generator cabinet in the back. Everything that you need. Yeah. Changing room up front. That makes sense. Okay. So that's what that room is on this trailer? That's a changing room in yeah, this Yeah, all one? these trailers for some reason are just a little different. Okay. Different manufacturers set them up just a little differently. Wow. Um, you notice on... Uh, okay. Oh, look at all this space. Okay. I think it's behind you. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's cool. Way more space than I was expecting. And that kind of makes sense. You know, I have a chiller and stuff to make up for. Okay. You'll notice on, um, on these CT trailers and the cath lab trailers, unlike the MRI trailer, these have pop-outs on the sides. Yeah. So when you park them, the sides spread out, it makes for room to get around for, you know, in an MRI environment, you don't want to be going around behind the magnet, but right, right. in a CT in a cath lab, okay. you want to be able to get all the way around. Most prevalently in the cath lab, when we look at that, because it just shows more operating room. I honestly can't fathom a cath lab <laughs> that's on wheels because I've never heard of such a thing. But cath labs are a high dollar modality, you know, yes, they are. they're very expensive procedures and when a cath room is down, it's major dollars, but it's also a major upset to the hospital admin. They get so upset when their cath labs run down. So it makes sense. Drop a trailer off and keep going. Oh, yeah. We find that we, uh, we rent a lot of these while we're installing a new cath lab for oh, somebody. That makes sense. Yeah. So they, so uh, they can just keep I've chugging along. had several renos where they'll shut down like one room at a time, but that does lead to some degree of work stoppage or workflow problems. With it. So we're going to stop in here. This is a Siemens Definition AS 128 slice. Okay. CT. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, Dustin tells me that this is the only one yeah, that, that he knows of, of in existence. <laughs> huh. So that would be uh, quite the workflow. It'd be in and out, 128 slice. Okay. Oh, wow. Why does it seem like each of these trailers is getting bigger and bigger? <laughs> Look at how much space there is in this one. Yeah. Holy, it feels so good in here. Yeah, there's okay. a doctor station here, here, uh, the operators here. Okay. Then you see the, the use of the cutouts or the pop-outs there. Oh yeah, this is nice. This is extremely nice. You know, and for, for the most part, like the room is actually designed to be quite convenient for, for even patients. You know, it's, it's not like industrial like you would expect to see oh, in a trailer. They this even put in quite art. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Just to, just to put the patient at ease a little more. And some art. I dig it. Oh, that's beautiful. 
And there's a lot of space back behind it, too. Yeah, that's uh, where the equipment room is. Oh, yeah. Wow, there's a, there's a lot of space in there. Okay, that's your master shutoffs and the stuff. Okay. Well, man, this is even very serviceable. Because this is our, our uh, second newest trailer. You've got a lot of space to pull covers off and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Absolutely. Yeah, unlike the MRI, it's a little more maintenance friendly. Okay. Well, I would agree that, yeah, that one was pretty cramped. And again, you got your changing rooms. Yeah. Wow, those are cold. Those, <laughs> those are real cold. Hello. <laughs> okay. You've got a view box. That's very nice. It does seem like uh, width-wise, they're getting wider and wider. Maybe it's just a perception, but... Yeah, yeah. I also, think they're, they're pretty much the same. I mean, you have a space for another workstation, or two workstations, yeah. really. Okay. Very nice, and a lot of storage. That's beautiful. So now this last one is my favorite. <laughs> and this is the newest one. We just got finished putting this together at the end of 2021. It's getting ready to go out to California for several months. Okay. This is our Philips Allura FD20 floor mounted cath lab with a large format monitor. And I don't believe anybody else has got a large format monitor in the trailer. Really? Well, the steps are nicer on this one. <laughs> Look at this. Goodness. All right, I was wondering how you're gonna fit all the workstations in. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Oh my gosh. So here is the problem that I was wondering. How were you going to run a cath lab in a trailer? Because width is yes. the problem. So width, because there's so many people that, that work in tandem when a cath case is running. It, I mean, you'd have, what, six to eight people easily yeah. in a cath room. Well, notice how you wide have, that pop out yeah, is on you that have, side. You have side tables. You have back tables. You, you have sterile tables and stuff in, in cath rooms. And that's very cool. Then we mounted this large format monitor on the wall. All right. And so, it goes back up against the wall, and these brackets come up underneath for transport. And then when the doctor's in, you can pull it out and extend it towards him. Look at this. Oh my gosh, they got ceiling mounted shielding. Look at this, shielding drapes. It's exactly what I would expect from a cath lab. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, oh, very cool. So you can lock down uh, the arm too. We lock that down for transport. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a hole in the floor right here. And we'll, yep. s we'll swing this straight on and lock it right in. So there's, there's a lot of things that people have to take into account when you start moving these massive items around because things that are heavy have a lot of inertia. And when a trailer is going down the road, things that like to move do. That is so cool. This is probably like the pinnacle of my trip is, is the seeing this guy. And uh, I... I would have probably called somebody's bluff if they would have said that this existed. Just because I, I've been in many cath rooms in yeah. hospitals and just uh, the real estate alone is, is, is precious in a normal cath room. Oh, absolutely. So you guys could actually prevent a work stoppage completely. Just roll up, keep going. All right, so this one's already got a project where you're going to be rolling out to very soon, huh? Yeah, and it, it's just what I described before. We're going to install a new cath lab in a hospital out in California. Okay. And they're going to take this guy on while we're doing the work. For the interim? That makes sense. Definitely. Like I said, I mean, cath is one of the most expensive, and it's, it's a moneymaker when it comes to hospitals. And when the cath lab has any problems whatsoever, oh, my gosh, it, the nightmares it creates inside. Uh, the executive level staff, all the way down to the biomed manager, everybody hears about it. It's a nightmare, but it's it's really cool to see that there's a solution, just in case. All right, absolutely. Oh, so the computer workstations. Oh my gosh, look at this. I how everything's just arranged because normally the floor box is a mess. Um, I really love how all this is just right here instead of like being floor mounted or underneath the table, mm -hmm. which is where it usually is. Okay, all Phillips. Now they just have to bring their med gases in in a portable way, but 
Okay, well, that's the least yeah. of their worries, really. Yeah. Oh, let's see. And uh, this Phillips isn't the only one. There's a couple of GEs out there as well. Really? Wow, look at all the space. This is so cool. So you'd have uh, probably three, maybe even four crew members over here on this side mm -hmm. monitoring the case at, while your doc is in there running your cath. Very cool. Is there storage for uh, full caths in here? Is there wall storage for uh, caths, or do they bring it per case, do you think? Uh, you know, that I don't know. Because I know that they're really long, like really tall, and I, um, I'm just curious about that. Let me see back here. I thought there was some stuff in here. Like I say, each one of these is so different. I see uh, right back here, there's yeah, some storage. Yeah, that's right. This is almost what I would expect because the, the cats are really, really long. Oh, wow, okay. Okay, so, so that's just shelving. Consumables. And then there's smaller cabinet oh, here. Oh, look at this. I was wondering where you're hiding the hardware. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I can tell you, you can feel some of the heat coming off some of these cabinets and it's not even running. Uh, so potentially this, you know, would be an area of concern normally, but I can feel the cold air everywhere. Um, this is amazing. They fit all this in here and still space for storage for whatever else you need. Now they might be able to put the casts in here. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I would expect. It's, it's going to be really tall. Okay. The fact that they got storage space in here too. Unbelievable. Well, very cool. This is probably gonna be like the only time in my life I'll ever experience something like this. Oh, check this out. Oh yeah. What? Look at this. Leaded glass. You, you see how thick this leaded glass is? It's an inch and a quarter, I bet. I bet you that's an inch and a quarter. It doesn't appear so on camera, but this pane right here shows you the cross section much more accurately. It's incredible the amount of engineering that it takes to put one of these systems into service. Look at that. Yeah, that's an expensive piece of glass. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you very much for taking us on the tour of these You're rooms. You're very welcome. <laughs> this is insane. And there are a series of other trailers we didn't even take a look at, but uh, you get the gist, guys. They're, they're large. They're very complex structures that takes a lot of people to plan out correctly. And the fact that they got a cath lab inside a trailer is insane to me, uh, given the space constraints that are normally in a cath lab. But this is very cool. So anyway, guys, this is going to sum up our tour over here. So we're going to go back inside. We're going to say goodbye to everybody. And uh, then we're going to get back on the road because that's what we do. We got to we got to keep going. So. Till next time, guys. Okay, guys, thank you for coming along the tour of Avante Health Solutions. This has been amazing. It's been a huge facility. I've counted probably a couple hundred people walking around here. And one of the last things I want to point out to you guys is that if you can't tell, just the attitude of the people walking around, the fact that they're communicating, they're having fun, they're actually enjoying their jobs. Every single person's just really enjoying themselves. This is probably one of the best work environments that I've personally walked around and experienced. So I want to say thank you to Avante for even allowing me in the doors to see behind the scenes to show you guys that third party repair can be better or equivalent to OEM. And the fact that some of the processes they have here in house probably surpass some OEM abilities. And that's one of the beauties of Avante is that they've invested so much money into their infrastructure, into their training programs, into their research and development programs. It costs an amazing amount of capital in order to be able to do that and they've invested for the future. So with that, I want to thank you so much for allowing thank me you, in Justin. here. This is awesome. Guys, thank you for watching. I know it's going to be a long video, but if you wanted to come through here and see how much stuff they got going on, we just had to make a long video in order to make up for it. But anyway, guys, Information is going to be in the description down below. They'll help you out with the training classes and some of their schedules. And thank you again for watching. Thanks.